Welcome one, welcome all to episode 168 of the Xbox Expansion Pass, recorded on Saturday, March 11th, 2023. I am your host, Luke Lore, the Insipid Ghost, and as always, I'm joined by my co-host, the Intrepid Captain Logan. And in this episode, we discuss Starfield's new direct and release date, the Capcom Spotlight's uh, Xbox adjacent announcements, and E3 news has begun trickling in. As always, we hope you enjoy the show. Logan, we like to start the show by offering words of kindness to those who have made our gaming weeks better. But first, my friend, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. It's been a really, really awesome week. Really just good surprisingly good week i can i can live with this week and i think a lot of it just has to do with getting time in with friends and and getting to play some some video games this week how about you uh it's been a tough week i know we talked about last week that, that things weren't going so hot uh, my yeah. wife's father passed away and we knew that was coming uh, i also am under the weather so if i look like death it's due to exhaustion and, and fatigue and just just dealing fabulous. with all of that Stop. Thanks, you buddy. look good You're Come on, you. Uh, <laughs> but uh, in truth, you know, for as bad as things have, have been, it's been a good week. You know, like things have recovered. Mm -hmm. I'm getting healthier. We've had a lot of great people come out of the woodwork to be kind to us. Uh, so I have a lot to be thankful for and excited about. And so that's that's a good win for me on this week, man. Yeah. Yeah. There's nothing easy about moving through someone's passing. And mm -hmm. Hopefully you just take it one step at a time, one day at a time. Mm -hmm. Make sure you're taking care of yourself. Make sure mm -hmm. if you if you uh, indulge in in the um, sweets that you have uh, good flavored sweets around. Mm -hmm. You're an ice cream guy. I love uh, ice cream. We talked about this. <laughs> yep, yep. You're an ice cream guy. I'm a cookie guy, yeah. uh, which is always fun. So that's cool, man. But uh, yeah, no, it's good advice. We've had great people come out of the woodwork digitally uh in, in discord uh in person people have been coming and taking care of us it's been it's been quite manageable uh Good. despite kind of a frustrating thing so i'm I'm quite appreciative of all that for sure that's awesome yeah it is awesome all things considered my friend so we've got our words of kindness tell me logan who has made your gaming week better so surprisingly enough obviously i could i could easily point to you and the guys for for the game time that i got in but um Ty Guy Travis over over at IGN uh he has been covering uh Remnant 2 mm -hmm. and it's it's never one of those things that's like it didn't really bring me up but I have some friends that mm -hmm. I I do Destiny with and they are big fans of Remnant and they've been playing through Remnant and the DLC together as like kind of like a you know like a fun Sunday thing to do mm -hmm. um and I know that they were interested in Remnant too so when uh Ty Guy Travis had been putting out his his kind of first look on it through IGN mm -hmm. um I was I was really excited because I was like oh good someone I trust um reviewing the the remnant two stuff and i can pass that along to my friends and they were really excited about it so that plus um seeing mike chapman the creative uh director over at rare studios for sea of thieves um is celebrating his 10 year anniversary at the studio mm -hmm. was such a, a a warm feeling for me like i i love that guy i don't know him all that well like obviously i, I have that parasocial relationship i've gotten to meet him but he is one of the kindest dudes out there and it just so imaginative. And I, I genuinely believe like as rare continues to move forward with sea of thieves and other projects and stuff like that, Mike Chapman's going to be one of those names that is like synonymous with rare. Mm -hmm. And the day he leaves rare, it will be either for retirement or for another project. But the day that happens, a light will have been lost over at, at rare and mm -hmm. I will follow him wherever he goes. If he ever mm -hmm. decides to move on to a different company, but I feel like he's going to be one of those lifetimers kind of like Chris uh, Marlowe, who's the voice of the great mighty Pooh and conquers bad for a day. I feel mm -hmm. like he's going to be there forever. Um, and he's just a, it was just, so yeah, those, those were the two things that really just like, I was like, Oh man, this is awesome. So, so cool to see. How That's about you? Cool. That is cool, man. Well, well, shout out to to both of them. That's amazing, Ty Guy and uh, Mike Chapman. That's awesome. Um, I I have two that I want to give uh, shout outs to. The first is Mr. Boomstick XL because he mm. was the first guest on Creator Talk, which is our patron show. Um, which I yeah, that was that was really fun, and he he was just really kind and enjoyable and taking 
a risk in being the first guest and, and being kind to join me. And so I appreciated that. Uh, it was a fun conversation about Xbox Game Pass. Um, and then uh, I want to give a, a shout out to friend of the show, Ainsley Bowden, who I know we bring up a lot. He, he was over at mm-hmm. Season Gaming. Um, he is doing me one of the kindest favors in selling me his computer, which I know I've talked about that before. Um, yeah. But he's doing it in such a way that is going to let me have a chance to go to E3 this year, uh, save the pennies that I need to, to make our content continuing. He's just been so kind and helpful in the process um that i just wanted to give him due diligence mind you he doesn't listen to this show um and it doesn't bother me that he doesn't <clears throat> it doesn't bother me uh but you know he's he's super busy but being so kind and helpful there they've been doing great stuff at sg to raise money for hoag so i just i wanted yeah. to give him another shout out i know we did that uh recently but but he's been a really nice consistent beacon of light kind of just yeah. in my dms lately so that's been cool really been really cool. good dude I love, I, I love like seeing him and the stuff that he does and with SG and stuff and mm-hmm. just, you know, doing what I think a lot of big companies are able to do, but mm-hmm. doing it while still doing it as, as like a side gig. Yeah. He takes Which care of his people, impressive. takes care of his audience. He's good to, to everybody, he listens to everybody. Like that's just good win. Good man. Yeah. So, all right, dude, uh, let's get to our patreon pitch which is of course uh where we get to shout out uh the people that take their time and money and energies to support uh, xcp over on patreon i'm going to read our new members this week and then i would love for you to read uh our tier two and three shout outs logan Uh, i like i like that we rotate those it makes me happy (laughs) um so these two people joined xcp's patreon this week and i'm so grateful to you uh mr rick davis aka butch 4969 over on twitter uh, and jesse martinez vandevar the third uh over on instagram as well both joined uh our our xcp patreon i'm grateful to you you guys are amazing uh and you made my gaming week better for sure definitely and and folks make sure that you guys are heading over to patreon.com forward slash xbox expansion pass Mm -hmm. If you want to join up as well too, shout out to the tier two and tier three members this week. It is Rick Davis, Jesse Martinez, Red Beast, Xbox Mike 29, Matt Without Fear, The Lord Sir, Master James Suddy, Brendan Meyer, aka The Winter Gamer, Sony's VP of Marketing, Kevin Butler, Clint Combs, DJ Hero, Dano 12. Thank you all so much for your support. It means the world to me that you are helping support Luke. Uh, He is being able to do so much as a result of this. It has been a big boon and I love you guys for it. Thank you. And we had a a good old gaming session last night with our, with our Patreon people. Uh, We played two hours of Halo season three. Was it two hours? It was was two two hours. hours. I popped two boosts. You're right, man. Yeah. Yeah. Two hours went by fast. It was awesome. It, it was great. Uh, Clint Combs, by the way, good at good at Halo. I enjoyed that. Yeah, that was yeah. Cool. Maybe awesome. not so much on the on the Warhog, but still good good people. <laughs> He's not worse at driving than Zuddy, though. That's for sure. That's, that's, for sure. <laughs> that's fair. I'm terrible at driving, so I can't. I have no place to talk. Ah, uh, but it was it was a good time. I always love jumping in. Uh, community nights are, are are fun there. So yeah. Uh, if you want to be part of our Discord, of course, do go ahead and join um, XCP's Patreon. We have a blast. We have a great old time. We all got to say happy birthday to, to Jam Pack Sam this week, uh, which was pretty darn cool. Yeah. Uh, Ellery, they are amazing. I love uh, I love you know hearing from them and about how much game time they're putting in as they a lot. Uh, they have fantastic questions too. By yes. the way. Ellery has fantastic questions. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, so I, I that, that makes my gaming week better every, every, every single day. So they are awesome. Yeah. Uh, well, Logan, uh, departing from that, we had a pretty darn cool week of news again. We were, mm-hmm. were graced with some good gaming news. Really enjoyed the Capcom spotlight. Love the stuff that we're reading about E3 as well as uh, Starfield. Uh, actual real concrete news here. But I want to start with our Capcom spotlight, if you don't mind. Yeah. Yeah, so we've uh, we we I, I was watching this when it was going live. Um, mm-hmm. I know that you you thought it was a little bit later, so we were like trying to catch you up on what was going on. Mm-hmm. Um, do you want to dive into Do you want to dive into Exo Primal, or do you want to dive straight into Resident Evil Four? Let's start with Resident Evil Four because I know we both played the demo. 
uh, yeah. which was was pretty darn cool. And yeah, I did go back and watch the spotlight because I did think it was later in the day that it was happening. Um, I don't blame you. It was a, yeah. it was a weird hour. It it was an odd hour, but I really enjoyed the spotlight. It had some really good Xbox adjacent news uh, mm-hmm. that came out with it. And first up, I think Resident Evil Four kind of that's coming out later this month. Uh, I believe as I scroll down and look at my notes, it's like two weeks away. Yeah, yeah, the twenty fourth. Uh, news of Resident Evil Four. There is a demo out now. It's called the Chainsaw Demo, where you can uh, jump into the opening but it does have some cuts here and there uh to resident evil 4 it's a trial version takes place at the beginning of the game i could tell where they cut some of the stuff for time purposes and content so that they could give you a more conclusive opening of the game proper but you can download it now yeah yeah i could i could tell because i've i i adore resident evil 4 that's one of my favorite games of all time i kid Mm. you not um shout out to the wii version which oddly enough is the best version of resident evil 4 to date um, <laughs> I, I kid you not because the aiming is so intuitive on a wiimote oh um, pretty darn cool and i played dude i played it when i was on gamecube off the bat that is just one of my favorite games of all time but did you uh, did you ever get the chainsaw controller i did not i did not okay. i always like i'm not Brittany bombacher like i almost went in but i didn't <laughs> um so uh but yeah this new trial version anybody can download it's on ps5 ps4 xbox series s and x as well as steam uh, and I would encourage all of you to do that, especially if you're on the fence. I know, I know, Logan, you've been on the fence with horror games in general. They're not really your jam. And I've warned you stay away from Resident Evil 7 because that's a real horror game, whereas the rest are kind of like yes. action games in a horror setting. Uh, but I played through this one. Uh, you can play through it multiple times, as many times as you like. There's no time limit limit on it. So it's a little different than Resident Evil 2's demo. Um but I liked a lot of what I saw. Tell me, good sir, uh, what were your impressions as a newbie into Resident Evil 4? I thought it was, um, it was campy. It was so campy, but in a good way. Uh, it, it Like as they were doing the voice, like I was, I was there at Raccoon City. It yep. was devastating. And then I was volunteered or voluntold to get into this group. And through the pain and the suffering, I managed to find my way to protect the, to find the the president's daughter. It's, mm-hmm. so it's like, what is this? That's Resident okay. Evil, brother. So I, I was like, all right, this is, this is a whole lot of camp. Um, the, God, the game looks fan freaking tastic. So mm-hmm. beautiful. Uh, I, the, I can see where. There was clearly like a a shift in design philosophy. Like the controls are a little interesting. Mm-hmm. I I appreciated that they told me how to do controls, but not everything until like certain points. So like when the chainsaw guy is coming at you, um, I think you automatically block the first time he swings at you. And well, he never got close enough to me to swing. So that's interesting. Oh, really? Yeah. No, yeah. I died. I died a few times. I died quite yeah. a few times there because uh, I didn't know like what to do. Um, sure. So I was kind of running around and I knew I knew from the videos that there was like a, a roundhouse kick. So I'm like spamming buttons trying to figure out like, OK, how do I roundhouse kick people? I'm so confused about this. Mm-hmm. And uh, it wasn't until I started to like shoot a couple of the the villagers that a little icon appeared above their head and it never gave me any contextual like information about like, Hey, this is what this means. But mm-hmm. I ran up to one at one point and it said melee and I was like, Oh, melee. So I hit melee. And, uh, that was when you did the roundhouse kick. And I was like, Oh, this is how you deal with large groups. Mm-hmm. I get it. Okay. So I think that the, the, the demo did really well. I really enjoyed the demo. Um, the first time I think it took me like 24 minutes cause I couldn't figure out what to do. And then eventually it just like, it ends at one point, you just kind of have to survive. Mm-hmm. And then the second time I went through, um, I didn't die and I got it down to like 18 minutes and had, had killed a lot more people, um, in the demo. So overall, I got to say the, the demo is a great job at, letting you get you play around in the space um mm-hmm. i definitely feel the anxiety at one point because i was running around and stuff was getting and i was starting to like you know slump over and, and and run real slow and i had no ammo and i had my my knife was broken and i had no healing and i was like i don't know what the hell i'm gonna do i'm just i'm just gonna keep running around yeah <laughs> hope that the chainsaw guy does the work for me because i don't know what else to do yeah so that was stressful but 
man it, it's a fun game um i don't think i'll i'll be able to handle the whole thing but in in a 20 minute increment i was like okay i can i can handle that mm-hmm. but yeah it was uh it was good i'm glad that they made this an unlimited demo mm-hmm. for once like so often they, they usually do like you can only play a certain number of times and if you want to play it again you got to delete it and then reinstall it and right you know they they've kind of learned their lessons on how to do a demo so i appreciate that it's it's available till the game launches that it's it's uh, unlimited play times like good choices good cho- good choices i really enjoyed my my time with the demo and it it I only played the demo, mind you, Mm -hmm. to say that I could talk about it here because I already knew I was in on this game, given the quality (laughs) of Resident Evil's two and three remakes, given my love for Resident Evil four, I already knew. And so I wanted to be able to bring something to this discussion um, because a lot of what you described is very intuitive to me having played the original. So it's interesting. It was like, oh, you didn't know you could melee. It's like, oh, why would you? So that makes great sense. And it makes me all the more happy this demo is out there. Um, yeah. I played this with headphones on, but it was in the morning time. So the sun was up. Uh, I always recommend playing games like this dead space and whatnot. When the sun is down headphones on, uh, cause it's just more atmospheric, but I do not enjoy jump scare type games. Like if that's the standard method, I just enjoy the atmosphere of horror games. I think we talked about this a few weeks ago, oh, man. You know? Yeah, there was, there was one, there was one dude in a house that I wasn't expecting and that, <laughs> he's behind the yeah i know you don't that will be jumped out at me and i i i almost put the controller down and walked away i was like nope mm-hmm. <laughs> nope yep. um dude I, I i the one thing in, there was one point where i was sitting there and and i'm sorry to cut you cut off and go back to my playthrough on this one but um was the was the knife breaking something that was in the original so i have been thinking about that nonstop. And I don't remember that happening. Okay. I don't remember that happening. That's not to say that it didn't, but yeah. I don't remember that happening. And so I'm, I was surprised. I like, like when that, that happened to me, I was like, what? I don't what? like that at all, dude. It, I, did I was not like, like it either. Like I'm okay with, uh, with legend of Zelda breath of the wild having breaking weapons because it's mm-hmm. like, okay, it's, it's pushing you to use different tools to get to, mm-hmm. you know, be more um uh ingenuitive with your with your type of gameplay right right um they don't give you multiple weapons in this one luke i need i need that knife to last i need that knife bad Uh uh-huh you and me both i was a little (laughs) concerned so i have questions but i'm not scared in the game proper like given the way it goes now there was a really cool part that if you want no spoilers in this demo that is meant to be played and meant to be experienced, then then block out the next 10 seconds. But there was a really cool moment where I climbed up into the bell tower to get away and the floor dropped out of me just all of a sudden. And I was like, whoa, oh my and God, that that surprised me. I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And that was a really cool element because my plan was to go up and shoot down the ladder and mm-hmm. keep them from getting to me because it is like you're you're trying to outlast them until the the church bells ring that's the goal um they're Dude, not I, they don't tell you that they're, you're not supposed no, to know that you're no. not supposed to know that that's that's a story beat i just uh, kept running later. i just kept dodging and running man i didn't uh, there was like a uh, and you're then supposed they, to you, you, okay. you did right you did right <laughs> um but they don't tell you that it's like you're waiting for the church bells and I don't know oh. what triggers the church bells. I don't know if it's time based or X amount of kills or, or a combination. I think um, it's time based because it happened about because I, I ran through it a couple times and it seemed to happen around the same time, like after the chainsaw dude had appeared. Mm-hmm. Man, I don't like those guys. There is a if you end up in the game proper, there mm-hmm. is a really cool moment with that chainsaw because that's not the first time you see the chainsaw guy. I don't think. Mm-hmm. Or maybe it's this, maybe it is, and then it's the second one I'm thinking of. But either way, there's a another moment where you just hear it in the distance. You don't see him coming, you just know he's coming, and it's just like, oh, buddy, here we go. Um, so I'm I'm nope. super excited for this game. This game is a day one for me. I did not do like any special edition or whatnot. The only game I'm doing that with uh, that I know of this year is Star Wars, and that's because I paid for that months ago with my birthday money. I was like, all right. Star yeah. Wars, yes. The rest of them uh, will be digital and such, but I'm I'm stoked for Resident Evil 4, and I would encourage anybody that has a moderate level of interest 
go play the demo, see if it's for you. Because I, I really enjoy what Capcom's doing lately with Resident Evil, uh, and I'm supportive of it for sure. For sure. Real, real quick, do you think they'll do this treatment for five and six? Yes, I do. Okay. Um, I think, I think the current business model encompasses modernizing Resident Evil to be approachable, mm -hmm. uh, kind of future proofing a little bit uh, yeah. here and there, getting rid of tank controls, but allowing themselves to kind of master what they want and envision Resident Evil to do because they were wayward for a little bit. Resident Evil 6 oh, yeah. being the example of that. Um, but I do expect them to do something with 5, something with 6, because 5 and 6 are difficult to get back into just by based on how they, they play. Mm -hmm. um, 6 was very QTE heavy. And five was almost Im imperatively designed around co-op play. Yeah, that was the goal. This was the age of Army of Two. This was the age of Gears of War. Co-op mm. third-person shooters were the jam uh, when Resident Evil Five came out. You could play huh. it single player. Don't misunderstand. But like it, that was the core tenet in design. So I would imagine some tweaks to both games to allow them to be more approachable are, are in the works. Six will need a lot of work. Yeah. Um, now, something I do in every game and Resident Evil 4 absolutely has this option. And I did it immediately. I do not like button tapping. Yeah. Ever. I immediately go into the accessibility and I uh, switch it to hold. And that is always the best way to play for me. I, I hold. I don't tap. I think that's a silly thing, if I'm being honest. Yeah. Um, Cause you so don't know how, how often you got to tap, like how many times you, this one does a little bit good job of showing you like a little bar that fills up though. Yes. When you got to break it. So I was, I appreciated yeah. that. Cause it's like, I just knew I had to get the, I had to get the, the, the meter filled. Um, but I would prefer to have the hold. I think I turned that on as well and shout out yeah. to the accessibilities too. Like I went into the accessibility features. They have mm -hmm. four main presets for different types of accessibility and all of them were very well thought out for a demo. <laughs> I was like, that's great. It's I fantastic not, that they put that in. More and more, am I impressed? It doesn't matter if it's Sony, Microsoft, a third party. I'm consistently seeing an effort of major AAA games to be more accessible. And you've talked about this more than I have on this show. Uh, to the show's credit, mind you, I I love the accessibility approach. It doesn't hurt anyone for more people to be able to play. And yeah. I think that's great. So it's it's what got me into Jedi Fallen Order is when when they added the accessibilities that they did i don't need the accessibility options but the accessibility options in there were so good that i was like that fixes a lot of the pain points that i had with the game mm -hmm. i will i will sit down and play through this and i'm glad i did because it's a fantastic game such a good game yeah such a good game i love it i love it uh so let's talk about a few other things that happened at this capcom demo that are relevant to our uh the xbox audience i think the Behind Resident Evil, the biggest news is Exo Primal uh, has a release date of July 14th, and it's going to be coming to Xbox Series S, X, Xbox One, PlayStation 5, PlayStation 4, and Steam. But what makes this so cool is that it's a Game Pass day and date game. So this will be arriving into Game Pass day one. You and I have talked about Capcom and building relationships with Game Pass and what the right move is, whether it's Resident Evil, whether it's Street Fighter, Exo yeah. Primal, etc., um, but I'm really excited to see Exo Primal arriving into Game Pass day and date. I'm interested in this game uh, because I like shooting dinosaurs and I like co-op with my buddies. I don't know the legs that it will have. I think we talked about that uh, in our, our kind of Halo session with our, our Discord people. But um, I'm stoked for it. I'm anxious to see the cross-platform uh, open beta test on March 17th and 19th. But I don't think I'll be playing it because of Diablo. But we'll see. Bad um, timing on that one. <laughs> bad timing and this is a game i know i'm gonna play because of because it's coming out at a great time for it like july is a great time for exo primal game pass is a great platform for exo primal and if it's got some a lot to offer i'm in on that battle pass because it's got a battle pass but this to me is a nice win for both game pass and capcom yeah yeah i i think that this will be i i still wish that microsoft would start pushing the weight as far as like what they can do with uh with like their money when it comes to game pass deals mm -hmm. but i i've i've 100 admit like there is a budget that they have and they they probably don't want to go above that budget plus capcom knows what their value is mm -hmm. and they know exoprimal is going to be 
a bit of a dicey run because it it is kind of taking some of the things that other games have done and it's pushing those. Mm-hmm. So I'm I'm definitely going to check out Exo Primal. Uh, I love the look. It has a very kind of anthem meets um like I don't know. It's just, it's, it's like a second extinction was a it's, game that came anthem out. And, yeah, it's Anthem and Second Second Extinction. Yes. Yeah. So I'm I'm very curious to see what the cosmetics are for the mechs because I think that that's what's really going to draw people in is, is you know, how cool is your mech going to look? It's one of the things that a lot of people love about Halo games mm-hmm. uh, as well as like Destiny. So there's definitely a hook there that, that can be exploited with um, good content at a regular click. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the fact that it's coming to Game Pass just really, really awesome. I, I really wish that the the beta wasn't on the 17th and ninth through the 19th because I think if they'd done it like a week later, you probably would have had a lot more engagement because I think a lot of folks are going out and buying KFC to, to be able to get to that Diablo demo. And uh, we'll, we'll have to see how Exo Primal does as far as the actual testing goes and see if they plan another test. Hopefully they do. Hopefully they put out another test. But yeah, July is a fantastic, and we talked about it too offline. Um, July is a, a fantastic time to be putting a game past day one game uh, given that you've got everything that lands in June and then you've got everything that lands in September with some stuff at the end of August and there's nothing so far slated for July, which is, is a good time to be a game that is going to be brand new to everyone. Let's let's pause all this video game nonsense talk, okay? okay. This isn't even a gaming show for the next two minutes. All right, uh, cooking it you, is. Yeah, you can go to KFC and get one of their garbage sandwiches yeah. and get into the Diablo beta. Um, KFC is gross. And I found out my yeah. friend Kevin Butler likes KFC. <laughs> and honestly, uh, I wanted to throw up like on him for that disgusting <laughs> statement. There is no grosser fast food than KFC. And Logan, I need you to agree with me on this. The future of the show is at stake here. Uh, is there any grosser fast food at all? Than KFC? Um, it's disgusting, right? Like I can't be the wrong one here. Like I, I mean, I'm. It's it's. You know what? I'm I'm gonna say something, and this may be sacrilege to some, but if you live in California and you and you still believe this, I feel like you're telling yourself a lie. I feel like KFC is on the same level as In and Out Burger. Um, because you're gonna both, wait, wait, wait. Are you dumping on In In and Out? Yes, because I've actually eaten it on a regular basis. In and Out Burger is not a good burger joint. I'm sorry, they are not. Wow. They there are so many better burgers out there that you could have. In and Out Burger is just they're cheap. That's what it is. They haven't raised their prices, but In and Out Burger is not good, and KFC is not good either. Okay, so we agree on KFC. It's been I will say it's been a minute since I've been in In and Out. But I've never heard people dunk on In and Out. Like it's not a thing I've I've been exposed to in my lifetime. People never. You're the only one I've ever heard someone like In and Out's not good. I've that's heard. Because go ahead. You that's because you live on the East Coast. Everyone that lives on uh, you know that side of the the Mason Dixon line Dude. loves In and Out because y'all never had anything like it like over there. Like you have actual regular stuff and and like a lot of like In and Out Burger. I'm sorry to say, and if you believe this, you're lying to yourself about this. In and Out Burger does not make good food. They make oh cheap food and they have a, a lot of flash as to like what it is. The only thing good about In and Out Burger is the shake in the wait time. That's mm. it. That's all that's good. I hate the I hate the fries. I think there's so many other fries that are out in, in the industry that are so much better. And the burgers mm-hmm. are greasy messes that that put McDonald's to shame. Um, mm-hmm. I'm sorry. And that, that, bear in mind, when I go out for a burger, there's a local joint near me that does mm-hmm. like you have you ever seen like the 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 twelve dollar burgers? Yeah. Those those kind of burgers from a local place. Mm-hmm. for not $12 and okay. they have the most amazing gimmick ever. Like the gimmick is you go in, you got cards, they, they, they split, they spread the deck out. And if you mm-hmm. pick the Joker, the meals on the house and that's every single order, everyone has an opportunity. You just got to pick that Joker. 
and it is a it is a fantastic place so shout out to skips because i love that place but yeah You're taking no, me on a journey here in, in and out yeah, well th- this is this is the cooking podcast uh yeah no the in and out burgers terrible just like kfc kfc is horrible horrible like fried chicken there's so many better fried chicken places out there and i'm not talking about raising canes i'm sorry i don't know who raising canes is for but it is not me fair Fair point. Fair point. Uh, side note, uh, as I'm trying to get to E3, KFC, if you need a sponsor, I got you. You can do, or rather, if you want oh, to yeah. sponsor the show, yeah, I'll totally. Yep. I'll read mm-hmm. your ad. Okay. Yeah. Plane flights are expensive. Yeah. Yep. Um, <laughs> back to regular scheduler programming. Uh, <laughs> so, bottom line, Exo Primal, we're in on it. A great time of year for it. I'm curious to see what happens. We'll see if the game survives through uh, to the end of the year. Uh, Street Fighter Six was the other kind of the third pillar of the xbox adjacent news in this and i gotta tell you i was pretty disappointed by street fighter 6's showing in this showcase but it might be because i'm already sold on the game and i didn't need more uh in this in this trailer we saw a new color commentator uh and we saw you know some of the some of like the little different features that were coming to it we know there's a capcom pro tour in 2023 that'll have street fighter 6 in there and in the game's hub you can play street fighter 2 None of that blew my socks off, but I also didn't care because I know I'm already in on the game. Uh, yeah. So so maybe that that's why it fell flat for me. Maybe the the fighting game community was like in on it, but uh, fighting game community, by the way, eating eating real sweet in 2023. Dude, this year is nuts for fighters. Like, yeah. the, I don't know when you know who sacrificed what to the fighting gods, but the planetary bodies aligned and you're getting every fighter this year, every yep. fighter, <laughs> except every for soul caliber. Uh, is soul caliber still going. Is that a thing? I hope so. Cause okay. dude, I still have fond memories of, uh, spawn link and Darth Vader from soul caliber Two. Like I still I- love soul caliber. I do miss the, I say that I miss it, but I don't want it to happen again. I miss the console specific characters. I thought that was a cool thing, but I don't want that to happen again. I don't, I think that's a silly thing in an age of cross play and and everything (laughs) else. Like I don't like it. I think because I've seen so many companies abuse it at this point. Yeah. Uh, Particularly as we're watching this Activision Blizzard, Sony, you said, he said, you're taking from my console as, as that unfolds more and more. I'm like, I don't care. I just want to play, but let me play with you. It was it was an amazing time when there were three consoles on parity as far as like the same game releasing on it, and mm-hmm. each one got a really good character. Like I don't know about Spawn. I love Spawn. Trust me, I really love Spawn. Mm-hmm. But it was really it was really crazy to see the different characters that were actually going to be coming to the different ones, and everyone had a very specific like one that they attached to, mm-hmm. and it was just. It was it was a really interesting time, but yeah, no, I, I would prefer if they didn't do that. Just put all the characters in there, regardless, and let everyone have access to them. It's a fun nostalgic kick, but yes. yeah, give 100%. give it, give me everything. I, yeah. I want everything for everybody. I don't care what you're playing on. Um, I'm full in. Like when or if the Activision Blizzard deal goes through, like I don't care for any of those games to be Xbox exclusive. They can be on every platform for all I care. I want them in Game Pass. I want to be able to play with my buddies. And I don't, I don't care, you know, now that discord's on PlayStation, it's that much easier for Joe and I to, to talk. If he while figures it out, if God. he figures it out. Oh my God, that dude. Like, I'm not even joking. He Come is on, tech illiterate sometimes. He's like, yeah. oh, discord's terrible on Xbox. I'm like, what are you talking about? It's the same button prompts as a party. He's like, oh, I know, yeah. I know. Oh, I sabotaged much. him though. So it's, it's all good. That is funny to me. That is funny to me. Also, I don't want to get into it though. I still feel right. like an idiot. I feel <laughs> bad. About, I still feel bad about that. He got the most damning uh, podcast review over on iTunes, and I do feel bad for him. But I've made it like I made. I wrote the the review. Uh, side note: review your podcasts on Spotify, iTunes. Go support your content creators. That if you don't have finances for a Patreon, or if you don't have, uh, if you're not watching on YouTube for oh, yeah. likes and, and whatnot. Supporting content creators by writing a review means the world. But Joe got a pretty mean one. And I was like, oh, that sucks, buddy. And then I pretended like I wrote it, which I will not stop making that joke. So, yeah, I I, not to dwell on it, but it was just it was it was one of those things where so often people think they're being cute and clever Mm -hmm. and they don't take into account how much of a jerk they're coming off as and how much other people are going to laugh 
when you go after like a, a person's community or a person who has a community, yeah. like behind the scenes, you're getting your, your name is getting drugged through the mud a lot more than the 15 minutes it took for you to write that review. Yeah. And be nice. Just be nice. Be good to people. So much go- easier. Yeah. So much easier. Just be nice. Yes. I don't get it. Uh, yeah. We did get a question about Capcom from Famous Seamus uh, over on Twitter. He wrote in on Twitter. He says, does Expo Primal make, uh, sorry, does Expo Primal being on Game Pass make you more interested in trying out the game? Yes, wholeheartedly. That's exactly where I want to play Exo Primal. I don't know that I'd spend my money uh, in a year where where there's a lot of great stuff happening. Game Pass is is the great place for Exo Primal and I will tell you if the game is enjoyable, I will spend my money on that battle pass and support those developers. Yeah, that's what it is for me at that point. Like if if I enjoy the game because I didn't have to outright buy it, because mm-hmm. it is it is coming out. It is a regular game that you can buy on all the other consoles. And I think it's being sold for sixty dollars right now mm-hmm. on most of the platforms. So um it, it being on Game Pass alleviates the 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 trepidation that I have with going into a game that I don't know how I'm gonna feel about it because otherwise I would have to wait for reviews, watch some gameplay and and make the judgment call from there. It's what stops me from buying a lot of games. But being on Game Pass means that I'll be able to experience it the way I think the devs wanted people to experience it, which is having fun with your friends um, Mm -hmm. without having to necessarily feel that weight of $60 telling you that it needs to be a good game. Mm -hmm. I think so many times we defend games uh, that that we've purchased because we've purchased them, not necessarily whether or not they were good games. Uh, So I'm, I'm looking forward to that. If the... If the game is fun and it, and it has a really good hook and it's not going to be one of those, ah, we'll, we'll play it for a month and, and get our, our money's worth out of it and then move on to the next game because I think there's something maybe coming out in August that we'll, we'll probably want to get into. Then that's when I'll probably be like, okay, I could see myself grinding through the battle pass for this one. But otherwise, I think Game Pass really saved me a lot of money uh, on, on that one. And I think that's what Capcom is banking on, yeah. right? I, I think that's exactly what Capcom is hoping will happen and i'm fine with it any game that has a battle pass if it comes to game pass it is more likely to succeed in my opinion agree fully agree there fully agree uh well logan uh and thank you seamus for writing in logan uh suicide squad uh the much maligned suicide squad uh now has been delayed it's been reported by jason schreier over at bloomberg from pretty reliable sources uh that there is a delay from its may 26th release date uh noting that there was backlash from uh, the recent sony state of play a lot of people including me were really frustrated and disappointed by suicide squad all things considered despite being excited for a dc property knowing rocksteady doesn't miss and knowing that I'm going to play it, I am disappointed about it. It's not the, where the energies of Rocksteady were not where I wanted them to be. I wanted them to take on a new hero uh, and and showcase kind of the best that they have to offer in creating environments. But bottom line, Suicide Squad is delayed out of uh, spring 2023. No word on exactly when this is going to happen. And I don't think officially no. Suicide Squad has said this. This is based on Jason Trier's pretty darn reliable reporting all things considered so don't know don't know how to take this one yeah it was it was corroborated by by uh jez corden as well on twitter like they were they were looking for sources that that could help kind of say like yeah for sure this is something that they've heard as well too uh just before jason schreier broke the uh the news from his sources as well Mm -hmm. but yeah it's remember remember at the beginning of the year where, you're, where we had that question, it was like, what game do you think will slip to 2024? And I was like, uh, it'll it. probably, yeah, it'll probably be this. And you're mm-hmm. like, really that? And I'm like, no, nah, I'm just messing. It's probably going to be uh, Suicide Squad. Because, again, we hadn't seen anything. We had two trailers up until that point. And when the state of play came through and we finally got to see gameplay, everyone was like, huh? Because that was, that was like, we we were waiting to see. So now, knowing what they know, I don't think they can really change a whole lot. I don't necessarily think that the changes that are going to be made to the game, if any, um, are going to revolve around games as a service. I honestly don't. I think a lot of it is going to be based around the the game mechanics and the choices that they made with how flighty a lot of the characters look. Because mm-hmm. I don't think that a lot of people are in for 
that version of the suicide squads that are going to be hopping, flying, jumping around, like watching King Shark double jump dash through the air to land on someone to chomp them and stuff. I was like, he should be bulky and heavy and like climbing up the side of a building. That shouldn't be like, he shouldn't be that agile in the air. Look at the size of him. Yeah. Captain Boomerang, just AKs and pistols. Like what's his name? Captain Boomerang. And I like, saw, I get, there's a, go ahead, go ahead. I, well, I, I, I do want to say I did see like the, the pinball wizard version of him where he's throwing around the boomerang and stuff like that. But he was also flying through the air, teleporting from boomerang to boomerang as well too. And I'm like, my dude, no, like grapple yeah. hook around. Like that's fine. Do it, what Harley does. It's just, I was just so disappointed in, in everything that I wanted it to be versus everything that it is and knowing full well, I'm excited to play it nonetheless. And that's the conundrum with it, but I will never be excited for the multiplayer centric gear score driven Rocksteady game. When I see Rocksteady's history of just absolutely trend setting what a single player superhero game can be, they set the bar and the standard for being the superhero they like that's where the phrase you feel like batman came from it's because of rocksteady's good work so so on that front it's like yeah i'm disappointed absolutely and i know full well they haven't missed yet and so i give them the benefit of the doubt on that front that's why i'm still excited for it but uh, this delay i hope that it lets them solve whatever problem they think they can solve in that window of time uh and i also hope this is my pipe dream that will never happen like i know this is dumb I hope they keep the city, keep some of the enemies and use the city and the enemies and template and create a Superman game. It's Metropolis. You've got Brainiac. You've got villains. You've got cool things you can do with it. Make your spinoff game. I don't know, like something you can do something with the work that's not all lost. Um, But I'm well aware that that's a a silly thing from the outside to say, uh, but I would like it to happen nonetheless. If if you are marketing this game, I'm speaking to you, uh, marketer. And and uh, okay. I guess this would be a better way. If I was marketing the game and I had a 15 minute spot in a Sony state of play, I'm carting out the heroes. I am bringing out the fight against Flash, the mm-hmm. fight against Batman, the fight against Superman, working mm-hmm. in collaboration with Wonder Woman. Like I am not going to have a giant cannon as the thing that you were attacking in a 15 minute spot on a Sony state of play. Yeah. Gents, and- ladies, thems, robots, bring out the superheroes. We want to see us kill the Justice League. That's who you should be marketing the game to. We've seen Batman, we've seen Wonder Woman, we've seen The Flash, we've seen Superman all in CGI trailers and that's it. Yeah. And that is hugely concerning. If you're going to concerning, if you're going to market the game and you're going to show like this is what Gotham Knights did well, they actually marketed the game and showed you fights with big characters, but also some of the boss fights, not all of it, but a decent amount of the boss fights to get you an idea of what it's going to be like Mm -hmm. to go against Mr. Freeze. And that 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 footage was compelling for me is what made me want to try out the game. But with Suicide Squad, if you're going to show me shooting purple blobs on a helicopter and a cannon and a tank, that's not compelling enough. That is that is the side mission gigs that you're going to do with your friends to get gear to be able to handle the fights with the bosses, with the actual Justice League. Mm-hmm. Show off the Justice League. Market the game better. You can do it. Just do it. I loved DC Universe Online back on the PS3, early PS4 days. But that's what this looked like. And I'm like, that's yeah. not what you that's not a good look, bro. Like, no. That, and the and the marketers leaned into the Arkhamverse. They they've shown Batman, they've shown Flash, and like good trailers, but no good gameplay. And like the traversal looks really cool. I'm in for the fun factor. But this mm-hmm. is this is never gonna be what I wanted Rocksteady to do. It's just not. And it looks like trend chasing versus trend setting. And that's really disappointing. It looks like if I watched Playground Games. Uh, make a hero shooter it's like whoa you were trend setting in the racing in this genre and you guys were the standard that everybody looked to and now you're going to go chase this so that bums me out that bums me out and i hope 
I will gladly be wrong. I will eat so much crow and I'll be happy to do it because I love DC and I love superhero games. I like playing with my friends, but uh, I'm desperate for that Superman game. I'm desperate for hero games and, and I'm desperate for people to be excited about DC uh, because I love DC. And that's just it's been a, it's been a tough go for every win. The Batman Zack Snyder's Justice League. We get a loss. We get Wonder Woman 1984. We get Gotham Knights. We get, you know, the show as well as the game, even though I love the game. I know it's not the hit people wanted it to be. I get it. Like, I want yeah. people to be excited for DC the way they are excited for Marvel stuff. Um, so I think that. All right. That's, that's a lot I, of time. I there. think this is like, like. If, if you're if you're over there thinking like oh suicide suicide squad is doomed i think it's going to be a, i think it's going to be a fun game i think they want to make sure that this game feels fun the mm -hmm. way they're doing it i don't think that they're going to change a whole lot but i think they're going to, to really kind of test it honestly if i'm if if you guys want my honest opinion i do think that they ought to really consider pushing it out to 2024 and looking at some of the main concerns and deciding if games as a service is really where they want to go with this. And don't you dare do $70 plus the cost of a battle pass. That's yeah. a terrible idea. Don't do that. Don't do that mess. Do 40, do 40 with a, with a $15 game pass. And I guarantee you people will be a lot more willing to pick it up. Mm -hmm. There you go. I'll take that. I'll take that. Yep. I'll do that in a heartbeat. All right. Uh, we mentioned Gotham Knights. We'll just say that Digital Foundry has released some stuff. Looks like a lot of things have improved with with Gotham Knights. Uh, um, great. Cool. It should have. Patches. Great. Love that. Um, I do want to talk about the Starfield Direct and Sea of Thieves Season 9. Logan, there's some great Xbox stuff there. However, take a moment real quick. Uh, Matt Valdez last week uh, submitted to us a code for Dead Space Digital Deluxe Edition. He said to please give it away in our Patreon Discord as a thank you to the patrons. We did. We tried, but it's region locked for the U.S. And so the winner of that one and the rest of our Discord people asked me to read it out here on the show. And so I'm going to put that up right now on the screen. That code is there. I'm doing cool hand signals so I know where to put it. First come, first serve. This code is from Matt Valdez and uh, from our patrons as well. So thank you to that. Dead Space Digital Lux, an amazing game. Cool. Logan, Starfield Direct. We, are, we have a date. We know when Starfield is coming out. Starfield Direct is on June 11th, 2023, two days prior to E3 starting. That is the Starfield Direct date. And then Starfield itself is coming out on September 6th, 2023. I am excited by this. I am excited for the news. I think September 6th is a great release date for it. I know a lot of people are kind of up in arms. Is this a delay? Is it not? It doesn't matter. That's when the game is coming out. A lot of polish time. I don't want it to be janky. This is a chance for not the next Todd Howard game, but the next and biggest Xbox game to have its debut and moment. What are you thinking here, brother? I'm I expected this. I, I genuinely I know a lot of people were expecting it to be like hitting in the first year, given the, the news that we got from last E3. Mm -hmm. Um I I fully anticipated this game coming out in fall. I, I was not expecting it to show given what's coming out in the first half of this year. Mm -hmm. I was like, dude, there's no way you'd want to, you'd want to uh, send this game out amongst all of that. The, the biggest question in mind is where is this going to land in relation to Spider-Man two? Because I, I believe Spider-Man two is, is going to be an October or November release. I think those are the two months I'm anticipating them announcing it. Agreed. Cause I think they're going to do a state of play in September. Um, that will probably cover the rest of the year and a little bit into 2024. Uh, but I'm glad that we got a date. Um, it's it's a little less than a full year from the original launch date that they wanted. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that they have said numerous times that they're working on polish, which is good. I, I think this is a great opportunity for Bethesda to have time to be able to, or afforded the time to be able to really, really polish a game. Make sure that it feels good. Make sure that uh, it runs smooth. Give uh, Digital Foundry the opportunity to praise something for once um, mm -hmm. so that they can actually be really happy with the game as opposed to constantly disappointed. Mm -hmm. uh, I would love for us to get a showing on July 11th, or sorry, June 11th, uh, that just 
blows our mind that just mm-hmm. absolutely destroys all expectations of how big this world is going to be the interactions you're going to have with it um at its at at, at its core this is still 100% the same game uh as Fallout and Elder Scrolls i don't think anyone is going to look at this and think this is something I've never played before because I think a lot of us have, especially if you've been with Xbox and have been playing Outer Worlds. Outer Worlds is going to be a smaller, funnier version of Starfield, mm-hmm. and I will always, I will always stand behind Outer Worlds as one of my favorite games on Xbox because it's just, mm-hmm. <laughs> it's a really good game. Um, Private Division has done a terrible job with the ports, by the way. I'm I'm putting that mm-hmm. out there now, uh, but Starfield, I think it looks great i think they just need to make sure that it feels great and it runs great and if they need if they need to push it beyond september 6th totally fine with me plenty to play out there not a problem take the time feel confident in your in your content and when it's ready let me know because i'll be there day one that's an interesting thing i think i'd be upset if they delayed it again um, upset is a relative term in the gamer space. I don't mean like pitchforks, knives, death threats. That's a stupid thing. If you ever do that, you're dumb. Uh, don't ever <laughs> attack developers. Uh, that's just a foolish, foolish thing to do. Um, but I will say that it's time based on the timelines they consistently have pitched. So you kept saying, you know, it's in ink, eleven, eleven, cool. And then you delayed. Okay, no problem. I am fine with delays to make games better. And then it was, okay, but by the first half of the year, okay, fine, September. I'm not bothered by September at all, but like it is time based on the timelines you keep promising, right? We've yeah. constantly and consistently questioned Xbox's ability to manage uh, delivery and its studios and their delivery of content. Bethesda, for the record, for anyone that's not sure, is mostly separate from that. Bethesda still operates as its own company. In fact, even in Major Nelson's This Week on Xbox, uh, he said the Bethesda Direct. I don't know if he caught it or if it slipped through, through or it was intentional. I really don't know. But they said the Bethesda Direct in June. And Luke Lore's prediction, based on no factual evidence, but based on scuttlebutt and my own belief here, <laughs> is there is going to be an uh, an Xbox event of some sort, perhaps Fan Fest. That's a common thing that is going to be in conjunction. My thought is they're going to have Fan Fest. They're going to tote us all into the xbox theater uh we'll watch the starfield direct we'll watch something else with a few xbox specific things and celebrate and then we go hands-on with starfield we go hands-on with a few other projects uh at that xbox theater that is my thought i really want to go i really hope it's a thing uh i want to be like i i've talked about this with you privately like i'm gonna go to e3 this year i've decided i want to go i got my media badge i hope you go with but if you can't like monies or monies I want to go to E3. I want Xbox to celebrate the timeline of events and its fans as well. We know they're going to have a digital presence at E3, but they also have the Microsoft Theater. Let's not waste that. Let's go on that stage. Let's let's shake some hands. Let's let's see our friends. I hope that happens where we can all get excited in that way. Yeah. And I think we will. I think we will. I I hope so. Um I would love to go. It would be my first E3. It'd be mm-hmm. fantastic and the thing that I'm hoping for, and I and I might want to reach out to some of my friends at, at Rare about this, is I might try to see if I can get any kind of confirmation that they might be going. Because if, mm-hmm. if they're going, I will figure out a way. I, if I have to sell, if I have to sell, you know, body parts, blood, you know, whatever, I'll, I'll, I'll figure it out. I'll find the bodies. It's fine. There's yep. plenty buried somewhere, you know. Yep. I, I I will want to I will want to be present for that because I I have not gotten to go to an E3. I was mm-hmm. very bummed when E3s were starting to get canceled, obviously for good reasons. But then like afterwards, people are like, these are just not what they used to be. That's always bummed me out because it's always been in my mind E3 being a celebration of games, announcing mm-hmm. what's coming out for the next year, being really excited about all the new projects that you get to announce um, showing up new news for, for games. Like how many times have, have we loved watching the heads of the company come out and be excited about the thing that they they've known was coming for so long and they finally get to announce it. Like that's an amazing moment for 
any studio or any company to do. And it's always been in celebration of the fans. Obviously, it's a money making thing. They want to make sure that, you know, they're they're selling their product. But with the advent of of digital releases for for announcements and stuff like that, it's become less necessary for E3 to be present. Uh, Mm -hmm. But it's still like, I don't know, it's a tradition. It's a, it's a tradition to have that time in June to sit down and show off what you got. And uh, I'm, I'm hoping that they do do something because I think it would be really cool. I, yeah, yeah, that's a, that's pretty much, I don't know. I don't know what else to say about it. I know for sure I want to go to the two media days. I've got a media bag. I want to go to the two media days and meet and, and whatnot. Um, I hope that xbox does an event on the 11th i want to go in that theater i want to be there i hope that i can get into that like i'm not saying i'm talking like i can get in i don't know um but i would really like that event and and whatnot and if we could meet other people that are going that's the real kicker i do want to shake some hands with some people i've interviewed before i think that'd be incredible You're like hey do you remember me i interviewed that one time like that is a that is a life goal of mine right yeah um but to see this new revamped e3 i've only been to e3 once um shout out to sean capri but i would like to go again and i want to to experience that again uh, as well so we'll see how that happens but i'm excited for starfield in a way that i wasn't a year ago i know I'm excited for their direct it's really it's surprising it's i'm turning around on it <laughs> now it could be that i play it and it's not for me but i'm ex- i'm excited to be excited you know, like I'm, I'm excited that I'm, I'm stoked for it. So that's cool. I, I remember a year ago, you're like, the only game I care about is going to be Gotham Knights and Suicide Squad. Everything else looks boring. It's not my type of game. And I'm like, but you like Halo. You like the spacey space games. I do. And but Star- Starfield, it was the shooting and the space combat that I saw that I was like, mm, yep. Okay. Yeah. I'm in. I also think my tastes are slowly changing, but like Gotham Knights, I loved we talked enough about Suicide Squad. Um, I really sold on Redfall, like seeing gameplay of Redfall sold me on that. Uh, yeah. So I think there's a lot of things happening in whirlwinding, but I don't get excited about stuff that is not my wheelhouse until I see something specific and I can't put my finger on what it is every time. It's right? tough. Yeah. Um, so, you know, could be, could be a lot of little things about it that are interesting. One something I really don't like about content creation specifically content creators is when they double down on that no i'm not gonna change my mind that's Mm. so silly i change my mind every day about a thousand little things (laughs) why am i gonna pretend like i'm not willing to change my mind about something you know Uh, like yeah i'm I'm, I'm okay with that yeah go on this journey with me that's why we do content like enjoy us enjoy us changing and with you i've the amount of people that have said, hey, Luke, try this with me. All right, cool. You know what? I was wrong. Sweet. I'm in. I like being wrong because it means I like more stuff as a result of it. I Unless it was one of those situations where you thought it was going to be cool and then you played it and then you're like, no, this is not cool. That yeah, was wrong. Fair point. Fair point. Um, yep. Did we, I don't know where we're going with the rest of the uh, the show, but I feel like we we haven't, have we talked about the new season in Halo? We've not talked about the new season in Halo or the upcoming stuff for Sea of Thieves. Now, oh, yeah. here's the, the catch with Sea of Thieves on this show. I want to go on a tertiary level and then point everybody to Logan's show proper, Keelhauled. Um, I listened to the most recent one. Do a great job breaking down season nine. There's a lot of good stuff coming to Sea of Thieves that continues to be one of the best managed, if not the best managed Xbox uh, property. And I want everybody to go listen to Keelhauled. Uh, and give it a shot if you're interested in Sea of Thieves, for sure. Without a doubt, it is great. Um, but Season 9 looks awesome, and they've done some great stuff there. Uh, if you have anything you want to mention about Sea of Thieves on this show, mention it for sure, and then we'll go to Halo. They're legitimizing solo play. If you have always been on the fence about Sea of Thieves because you don't have a regular crew to jump in, or it's... Uh, something that takes too long you don't have enough time to be able to do it solo play is getting uh, a a big tweak in season nine they are scaling all of the world events to be able to be handled by one person Uh, and if you have more people it will scale up to deal with more people so it's based on crew size so if there was ever a point where you were curious to try out sea of thieves 
know that know that multiple crews out there are going to be the biggest threat because at this point they are going to be making it so that if you're solo you should feel like you can accomplish any of the world events out there and they're bringing back one of the ghost fleet ones which is one of my favorites Mm -hmm. um they're doing all of it to make sure that you can jump in you can feel like you can be that solo pirate if you didn't want to trust any other crewmates and stuff if you wanted to go out on your own sloop and be that that uh that that lone wolf um that is one of the biggest takeaways that i've i've gotten from season nine is that, that they hear and recognize that people like to play solo and that they want to experience things on their own or they play at a time where none of their friends are going to be on and that's the thing that they wanted to check out but it's just too tough Mm -hmm. uh, to do without a crew Mm -hmm. so i'm glad that they've really really put in a lot of work to make sure that the world uh, accounts for people who want to be on their own everything else is all quality of life stuff which will not really come across to many as like wow that's mind-blowing but if you've been playing the game it's mind-blowing uh but outside of that i would say if you've if you've wanted to check out sea of thieves but you've never had a crew season nine addresses a lot of those issues let me point out that season seven was the captaincy i believe yep you can name your ship you could do a lot of things you could get jumped into a game faster you get hey buy quick supplies and suddenly you're sailing you don't need to spend 20 minutes setting up your boat you spend a minute and a half and then you're out sailing that's awesome season eight was there for the pvpers if you want more combat pvp in sea of thieves they did that for you season nine on demand pvp yes very good and season nine is for the people that have wanted to get in but They just don't have the crew, the time, single player stuff, because that world has so much to offer. That is to me consistently addressing things, barriers for people in in getting into their game. And they continue to support it with well-made cosmetics, with a a really wonderful plunder pass, which I think is so much and so much. You only progress by playing the game for fun. That's cool. That's how you progress your battle pass, as it were, their plunder pass. So I, I really love Sea of Thieves for that. Because season eight, not really for me. I'm not a PvP on demand guy. But I can still go in and have a good time and still enjoy the benefits of it. And so that's been uh, a, a joy. And so I encourage everybody to play Sea of Thieves because it's a great game. And season nine might be for you if you're the solo guy. So that's what I'll say on that one. Yeah. Yeah. Really, really great job. So and then again, I'll be covering a lot more of this stuff in Keelhauled. So If you want to check out Sea of Thieves, you want to get more uh, info about what else is going on, especially with a lot of the stuff that's going on right now as a result of the fifth anniversary. Uh, Go go listen to that episode. Luke, you and I have to hop on do a tall tale because we I want to make sure you get those cosmetics. Okay. Um, so I'll I'll, we'll we'll talk after the show, but uh, I'll I'll get you set up with on how to how we can get that done fast for you. Sweet. I'm in. You know, I'm there for that. I'm there for that. All right. Halo Season 3 has launched, Logan. We've played with our community. We've played together. We've played with buddies. Um, Joe Joseph Moran, Mr. Bad Bit, this morning, Mr. No, I don't want to play Halo uh, lately, texted out to our group and was like, hey, who wants to play Halo this morning? Because we jumped in yesterday. Three new maps. One of them is a big team. Two new arenas. A new weapon, which which is, is great. The maps are great. All three editions. I'm loving and having a blast with the new... Uh, Battle Pass is fantastic. Uh, Really great progression there. There's real monies to be made, so you can make back your money on the pass if you dive into it. The unlocks are are much improved. The cosmetics just look great. Honest to God, man, I'm so upset that this quality, this incredible quality of Season 3 didn't arrive sooner because I think the narrative on Infinite would be a little bit different. But Season 3 of Halo Infinite has delivered And I'm having an absolute blast with friends, solo, love the new gun, love the new mode, the new gun game style mode they've got in there. Really enjoying that. Um, It feels good to celebrate Halo Infinite because, man, I've had to be down on it. Sorry, Ains, it's not been great lately. Uh, Season 3 is awesome, and I'm so happy to be enjoying Halo Infinite with people and seeing the narrative around it. It's a it's a bummer. It took them a year to get to this point because I think that after we had played through the test flights back at the uh, at the end, uh, no, it was it was the very tail end of July, 
uh, or, or at the beginning of August, I think. When we learned that the fruit physics were terrible. Yeah. <laughs> Horrible fruit physics. Um, I remember going through that and thinking everything about the gameplay here is killer. They've absolutely done a fantastic job with it. Um, shout out to, to those that love the commando, uh, rest in peace. I'm so sorry that you're just not what you used to be. Um, but yeah, we had, we had so much fun. The shroud, I don't think hits quite as hard, I think, as what, like what people have been able to learn how to do with like the repulsor, um, or how much fun the grapple is. I don't think it, it is nearly as good. Um, I'll give it time. I, give it time. yeah, I'll, I'll let mint blints figure out like w- what the cool thing to do with the the shroud is i think you already figured out like shoot a wasp with a with a shroud and uh they they kind of hate that i um, shot a wraith with it yeah the wraith was blind oh, is it the wraith I, oh, yeah okay. i hit the wraith with it yeah 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 so uh, vehicles with the with the shroud perfect combo um i i really loved gun game we've been playing i did not realize that you and i had been playing season three on the specific mode that you need to play to be able to progress through the the little story pass or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, I didn't realize that we'd been playing so much through that because you're the one that always kicks up the matches. Mm-hmm. I'm already like on the last two tiers of that pass. Like I'm, it, al- I'm almost done a battle with pass it. and a story pass. Yeah. And you can, you can do them simultaneously. It's not like you're losing out on it. Yeah. yeah. So I was, I was really excited when I went to check and see that. And I was like, Oh man, I'm almost done with this. One thing that Halo needs to do better is they need to, sh- they, they really need to figure out like a good way to show your progression in a flashy way. Because at the end of the match, you get to see like what's going on. But by the time I'm done with the end of the match, I'm looking mm-hmm. at the stats and then I'm like hitting X or B or whatever to, to get out of that screen. And I skip all of the, all of the progression that happens uh, with like my battle pass. Mm -hmm. And then when that's done, I have no idea where any of the things I earned are. Yeah. I know what you mean by that. There's so many cores on that, in that game that I'm just like, I I don't know where any of this stuff, it all looks too similar for me. There's not a good way to discern like where that content is. So Mm -hmm. unless you're steeped in the game, it's not going to be as, uh, as, as visible as I think they could make it. So, Mm I still really, really think that the UI is the thing that they need to work on the most with Halo. I think the mm-hmm. gunplay, I think the, the the latency, all that stuff has all been fixed. Um, the content's coming as far as the maps and the guns. I think they've done a fantastic job with that as well, too. They just need to have a better way of, of showcasing and celebrating your small wins throughout the battle pass. Yeah, I think mean, it's a fair point. Um, I will say that season three has addressed so many complaints and concerns given the lack of content that I was very pleased. The cinematics were solid. I really enjoyed it. The story for season three is much better than season two. The amount of unlocks are great. Uh, I like the cores. You're right that they need to do a better job of showing you which is what, because it does say it in there. It's there, but it's not obvious if you're not a seasoned halo player. And that is a problem when you've got a free to play multiplayer. Uh, you need to be showing people what it is they're getting truly. Um, I'm really happy with it though. Like I'm really happy with it. I'm enjoying that people are enjoying it. And I think, I think there's a good chance that if they can do the same with season four, where they can bring a new, a new weapon, a new a piece of equipment, a lot of good cosmetics, continue the quality of life improvements and the maps continue to get better. Uh, and cause like these, all three are good. They, they have diverse biomes, they're colorful, they're bright, and they're they're unique. Uh, that's special. It looks, it just is, it feels good. If they can keep that up in season four, then I think the infinite's, the memory of infinite will be more positive than perhaps it is right now, because right now the campaign is, is pretty darn good. We did this in our, our Patreon exclusive episode. We like Halo Infinite a lot. The gameplay is great. Multiplayer is solid, but it, it lacked the content delivery of that live service that it promised it would be. Now that we've made our peace with what it is and isn't, these seasons can can really shine to be Halo Infinite's memory. And so I'm excited right now. Could be a little recency bias, but I don't think it is. I really don't. Um, my hope is that we can remember Halo Infinite for this type of stuff, not season two or waiting a year for a new battle pass or whatnot. Like, not that stuff because there's a lot to enjoy. 
with Infinite. And so my hope is that people jump in. I know Ellery, they jumped in and then I saw a Clint joined us. Suddy, Suddy is yet to jump in with us. I know Suddy played with us. Like a lot of our Patreon yeah. people play. Like I want to to keep enjoying that with our community and and watch others enjoy it as well. Yeah, this was a good win for them and I'm glad they got it. Yep, agreed, fully agree. Shout out to the bandit. I love that gun. I love that gun. Well, let's get to some listener questions this week. Uh, we had Xbox Mike 29 right in, a Patreon supporter. He said, I saw the Lord of the Rings Gollum and Robocop trailers today uh, and was actually very surprised by how good they look, especially Gollum. Have you guys seen them and what are your thoughts? Uh, Mike, I did see them. I'm in for RoboCop. I'm the guy that loved Terminator Resistance. I thought that was a fun game, an easy 1K and enjoyable. Um, but I knew what it was and I let it be that and I moved on. I'm the find the fun guy, right? And I really enjoyed it. I'm in for RoboCop for finding the fun and enjoying it for what it is. I don't think it's going to be revolutionary. I don't think people care about RoboCop in the way that like we care about RoboCop at our age, right? Um, so I don't think the masses do, but I like RoboCop a lot. Still was not impressed with Gollum. Did not think Gollum looked great. What about you, Logan? Um, so I didn't get to watch the Gollum trailer, so I'll, I'll reserve judgment on that until I get to actually sit down and watch it. Uh, the RoboCop trailer, I mean, the graphics look good, but I didn't see a game. And mm. you're you're talking about Terminator as, as being something that you you loved from them, so I'm, I'm hoping that the the pedigree is there as far as like the quality of game that they put out, but the trailer, there's no UI. There's no clear understanding. It wasn't a full cinematic feeling thing. It felt like they were playing through the game. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I didn't even like get, get the small bit of UI to be like, okay, this is how many bullets you have left in your, your gun. Uh, mm -hmm. and he was using like an Uzi at one point and I was like, my dude's got like the Magnum, like just keep using the Magnum. It, it works mm -hmm. for you. That's what Robocop is. So I don't really know if um if i'll be in for that especially uh, the irony being is as a child of the of the 80s and the 90s and stuff you know um, uh, like the older millennial generation uh i feel like robocop is part of my childhood and mm -hmm. i grew up i grew up watching r-rated movies for some reason but mm -hmm. it didn't bother me mm -hmm. <laughs> and apparently didn't bother my parents either mm -hmm. um so but i mean i i love robocop i think he's a, a fantastic testament to what gro goofy stuff they could make back in the 80s mm -hmm. um i just don't see the game in this yet and and if they if they came out with a trailer that was more than just him walking around shooting people mm -hmm. um i think i probably would have been a little more impressed uh, I've got like Golem, like I've got Golem sitting on the on another screen. Very similar. It's basically just you running around as Golem doing stuff. So it looks very stylized. It looks interesting. I don't know that I'm going to really care about this given the the year that we're having. I could be very right. surprised about this being something that everyone's just like, oh my god, this is like one of the best Lord of the Ring games ever. And I'd be mm -hmm. like, okay, all right, time to check it out. Sure. We have we have so much to feed on this year. Uh, it's it's going to be a, a side dish, if anything. Agreed. At best, it's a side dish for me. At yeah. best. So there we go there. Uh, our next question came in over on Twitter from Rune came. What's up, dude? Good to see you, buddy. Uh, he said, IGN's uh, Ryan McCaffrey had an interesting topic this week on Unlocked. Nine moves Xbox should make this year. What are some moves you guys think Xbox should make this year? Um, I've not listened to that episode yet. Um, yeah, I haven't gotten to yet. Yeah. I've been behind for all the reasons I mentioned at the beginning of the show. I've just not gotten to a lot of content. Um, but I think the ABK deal is the one that I think I'm focused on and I want to see it happen or not. And then from there, I do think they need to have a fan fest. They need to continue these developer directs, uh, somewhere after the Starfield launch, we need a developer direct where they tell us what's coming in 2024 or give us an idea, right? Because we've already had Hi-Fi Rush and Age of Empires. We've got Redfall. We'll have Starfield. Um, side note, I've been jumping back into Hi-Fi Rush. Goodness, that game's good. Um, yeah. I want to see what Xbox is going to deliver in 2024. What are your two, three games that are going to be your triple A's? Do you have any smaller projects in there? I still wonder if we're going to have a small project for this year uh that we don't know about yet when you think about the minecraft support uh for the game proper minecraft dungeons uh, elder scrolls online hi-fi rush age of empires redfall starfield uh 
expansion for Forza Horizon, seasons in in Sea of Thieves, seasons in Halo. There's a lot that Xbox is doing right now in 2023. Uh, Projects they are stewarding. You're going to get Ghostwire this year as well. Um, You're going to get Forza Motorsport this year as well. There is a lot of stuff that Xbox is delivering this year, but I'm not sure people account for it in that way. Uh, yeah. and, and that's okay. They don't need to. I'm a content creator who, who reports and discusses Xbox. So it makes sense. Um, but I want to know what it is. Okay. 2023 is a pretty baller year for Xbox. Yeah. What are you doing in 2024? What's happening? Is state of decay happening? Is it Hellblade avowed? What's your jam? I'm sure a lot of those are for much further out, but what's your jam for 2024? What do you got in the hopper? If the ABK deal does go through in June, like we, currently think it might who knows question mark asterisk uh what's your first plan what's your first move xbox at this developer direct post starfield tell me what your first real big move is going to be for an xbox activision combo you know am i getting am i getting spyro are you bringing back a friend an ip that we don't get is skylanders i think skylanders is already coming back um but you know what's your (laughs) jam like what are you doing so that's my big thing is i want to see them address 2024 uh when the time is right right now they're focused on 2023 as they should be right they need to get out what they're doing in june they need to talk to us uh for sure about what's happening this the rest of this year and maybe highlight some of the great stuff they're they're doing currently but then 2024 that was a lot of I, i said a lot of words man Sorry. Yeah, you did. You you really wanted to push uh, push what was coming in 2024. We have a lot of titles announced for Xbox. A lot of titles. We've got Everwild. We've got Avowed. We've got uh, Fable, Perfect Dark. There's a lot of games that are announced right now. Mm-hmm. I want Xbox to start feeling more confident about those announcements uh, the way they are about Redfall and Starfield. And we haven't heard anything. I'm assuming that a lot of this will start to kind of unravel as we get to E3 and we start to see now that now that the the kind of like current press push for Redfall and Starfield are done, which of those four titles I mentioned are going to be the two that they decide for for 2024? And then what are the marketing things going to start looking like for that? Things I think they need to do with... Um, with xbox as far as like the things that they the moves they need to make they have to figure out how to get those xbox expansion cards cheaper because i think that those are a superior way to have games installed xbox assumes that they that you're going to have multiple consoles and they built the cards designed to be able to plug and play to be able to do that it's always the cost so they need to figure out the solution to make those games to make those cards cheaper for people to be able to pick up and play um I think they really need to figure out what they're going to be doing with Halo first part or like story stuff. I think they need to work that out. They really have to stop pushing um, all of their games into games as a service. Um, I think they're getting to the point where they are losing out on the first person narratives because everything is starting. And I'm, and I'm looking at things like Halo at, at right now. And I'm thinking about gear six and I'm wondering what is the priority for Xbox? They want everyone to be on multiple services on multiple things like that. That's why they're going for the the mobile section for uh, the ABK deal. Um, I want them to continue to push the operating system the way they did when the first, when the console first came out with really interesting things that they did, like, improving the the old games with better frame rates and auto hdr i want more titles to be brought to that i want to see like really strong improvements to things that you can do with the console like right now uh, clipping things like clipping um screenshots and and uh footage for on on xbox is archaic and disgusting and i hate doing it every time Mm -hmm. um being able to stream from your console is archaic and disgusting. I want them to be able to do that better as well. Uh, I I, I do. I I really, I genuinely believe that. I think that they could easily take a look at what PlayStation is doing and crib their notes 
and and mm-hmm. do them uh, do even if they just bring it up to the same level as what Sony's doing. Sony is doing a much better job of allowing you to share your gameplay and a, and a much better job of allowing you to capture footage. I can capture two, I think, two hours of gameplay on Sony. I can do a minute on Xbox. What is up with that? Yeah. The the consoles have like roughly the same specs. Why is it one can let me get two hours of footage and the other can't do more than a minute unless I go to 720p? Like, mm-hmm. come on, guys, figure it out. Um, those are the things that I think would be good quality of life updates and good, uh, good, good indications on where they're confident with the other titles that they've already announced. I want to know what's going on with Everwild. I want to know what's going on with Fable and Avowed. I want to know what's going on with all these games that they've that, that perfect dark, you know, I want to know mm. what, what is going on with them and I don't, and I want Xbox to feel confident that those are still doing well. Fair point. All right. I'll take it. I dig it. And I'm there for you. Um, <laughs> also you say the word footage. Is that a thing? Is that you're saying footage? Do you know you're saying footage? Probably not. You say footage. Footage. You said it like four times when you said footage. You said footage. And I was like, oh my gosh, footage. this is great. Go back. I don't know. Tape. I have, it's crazy. Anyone, no, I'm that excited. Wa- anyone that does uh, Sea of Thieves, they know I have trouble with some words like rune and ruins or um, mm-hmm. tomb and tome. I, mm-hmm. I conflate the words all the time. So I'm, I'm not surprised. I'm not a good speaker. No, that's not true at all. First of all, that's <laughs> ridiculous. Yes, you are. I was excited because I enjoy, I didn't know if you're doing it consciously. I enjoy saying the word uh, simultaneously instead of simultaneously. I like saying it like that. I heard Captain Picard say it once. Now I say it all the time. Simultaneously. <laughs> and like, I do it consciously. I didn't know if you were saying footage on purpose. I was like, is that one of his? So here we are. Maybe. I don't know. There we go. All righty. Let's go ahead and wrap it up there. Uh, we do have a question from Famous Seamus that I'm going to pose to the community it's for you guys to drop in Discord or respond to the show over on Twitter or in the comment section on YouTube. He says, with the Oscars this weekend having some excellent best performances or best performance nominees, what are some of your favorite performances in game? Answer that in the comments over on YouTube or over on Twitter or in the Discord. I'm going to drop my answer over on YouTube as well. Best performances in games. What are they? What do you got? Um, Logan, let's take a moment and thank the amazing patrons for supporting XEP. Thank the listeners for liking, sharing, subscribing, dropping reviews on iTunes, etc. What do you got going on Keelhauled right now? Everything we talked about, all that and more. Just look up Sea of Thieves podcast. You'll see you'll key, you'll see Keelhauled there. Uh, mm-hmm. Just find me there and I've got all my socials and links and stuff in the show notes for every episode. Amazing. There we go. Guys, you can find me on Twitter at Insipid Ghost. You can find Captain Logan there at Capt underscore Logan. Uh, and you can find the show on all your podcast services as well as YouTube. Have a fantastic rest of your week. Take care.